Another restoration? Um, an update? Well, it's a little of both. We're working on Mara's sewing machine table this time around. Welcome back to the shop and the channel. And yes, the sewing table is down here in the shop now. I can go through the things that we need to do to make this thing, to, to actually build this assembly here and duplicate it over there so these, other, these new drawers can go and shove two drawers on either side. Uh, this is a Singer. Mine downstairs is a Wilcox and Gibb. But this is a Singer table with a flip-up leaf. Um, I don't know. I think this had a fold-down. No, this did not have a fold-down sewing machine on it. Uh, there's, a, there's a metal plate that goes under the sewing machine that's become detached, which I'm going to have to uh, either remove completely or go ahead and uh, fix it. But this machine did not fold down. The machine was, could be easily removed and taken somewhere else and use, used uh, mobily, as it were. So let's take a close look at what's going on here. Something some of you may have noticed right away, this is a split turning. So basically what this is, is these two pieces here were... Um, glued together with a release paper between them and then turned on the lay, split back apart and put in place. Uh, they're screwed directly into the, the shelf, the, I mean the drawer shelves. Uh, there's no, no rabbits or dados or anything like that. And this is basically what happens here. I may put a stop on the back of this because there isn't on any of them. And the drawer goes in there. Like I said earlier in the other video, the drawers that are in here are right-hand drawers, left-hand drawers. So they have the this this uh, decorative stuff on the side, and these are going on the right-hand side. But they'll have no decorative thing here. I'm just, Mara said, "Don't worry about that. Just build the holder for them and put it in place." First thing I want to do is I want to get this leaf off, get it out of the way. Then I want to remove this whole assembly off of the table and put the table to the side and then duplicate this um, in the shop with all the decorative stuff that it needs and all that good stuff and then put it up on the other side so the drawers will go in. I've also got to do the knobs for the new drawers and knobs for the old drawers but in the, uh, in the um, new drawers there's two, three holes here. We're going to do one center knob in all four drawers so I have to plug these holes with some uh, some side grain plugs, because I'm going to put a finish on it to hide it. I mean, the finish I've got that I used, like I said, I used on the uh, on, on that uh, chair restoration. It, the gel stain will be perfect for this. I can see this had shellac on it. It's got shellac all over it. It's failing. So I had to get a really skinny, thinny screwdriver because the slots are kind of full of stuff. So let's get these hinges undone. Okay, let me get my glasses back on. So, there, these uh, barrels for the hinges were inlet into uh, this top. Not a problem. I mean, I was able to get in there and slide it, slide it out, and I can leave the hinges in place. Now to get this off, which is interesting because bigger screws. Ugh. Okay, this is what I need to duplicate. Glasses back on, you know, getting old sucks. So this is the part, nope, dropped a screw, but that's okay because, um, I don't know what these hooks are for. Interesting, we'll find out later. But this is the part I'm duplicating for the drawers. Um, now I wanna test fit the, um, I've got a big light here, by the way, so I can see what I'm doing. I'll get that out of the way in a second. I want to test fit the the middle drawer, the center drawer that I that I have repaired, but have not stained yet. 
Okay, little drawer. Let's see how this fits now. Do I have to make any changes to it? Yeah, I do. Um, it's a little loose. I'm going to have... Is that tight? And that's tight. That's relatively tight. Uh, I'm going to probably... Well, it's got some nails. I can probably just tighten those up. But I think I'm going to have to shim the wood here or shim the wood in here because when I go up like this and put it in place, it's it's not connecting to anything. It's just going to fall over. And then I when I push it in, then it, then it works. But no, I really have to make some adjustments for that. Okay, we'll take care of that later. Oh, let's see. This plate we don't need anymore. So I want to get that off. Here's the treadle mechanism. You've all seen these before, I'm sure. For, uh, for the treadle machines. And it also has a belt removal assembly with a belt guide back here and a belt guide here when you want to remove the belt to take the sewing machine somewhere else or whatever. You basically get it spinning and you turn this little thumb thing over and it pulls the belt off the, off the wheel. Put this out of, out of harm's way. And in a minute, I can take this and just put it down. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay this over and we'll get that, uh, that plate out of there. When in doubt, lay it on its side. Get this off of here. Mara says she doesn't need this plate here anymore, so... Get that rid of that. There's also what we would be considered a skirt guard. There is a metal guard in front of the wheel here, and I'll show you in a minute, that keeps your clothing, in the case of the 19th century big skirts, away from the wheel so it won't get caught in the wheel. This is this casting right here is what I was talking about. You can't get close to the wheel here. It keeps everything, like your skirt she's wearing or whatever, away from the wheel so it won't get caught up in the belt. And nothing else will get caught up in the belt from here anyway. This thing needs a serious cleaning. Oh, in my, in my adventures, I found out that this actually had shelves, uh, drawers over here at one point, uh, but not now. Going to have them soon. So this is the main culprit, this little framework here. Now, it looks relatively simple, but it's a lot of finicky bits. As I, as I said earlier, let me bring this closer to the camera so you can see, this is a split turning here and here. These are probably from the same piece of wood here as well. And uh, There's a technique where you glue it together with paper and then you turn it and you can, uh, then when you're done, you can split it apart and put it on the work on the piece. Also, more close to the camera stuff, the joinery. You can see it in the camera. This is a uh, interesting joint here. It's not one piece of wood, obviously. It's four pieces of wood. And it has this, this joint here in all four corners. The back, what would you consider the back, but the inside of this, is the, the, these, these pieces of wood are, are nailed in place. The, um, the hooks I found here, I have no idea what they're for, but there's a screw missing and they're supposed to sit like this. Like that. <clears throat> also, these pieces here where the drawers ride have runners on them, and the bottom of the drawer has not runners, but just uh, it, the sides hang down, the bottom sits inside here. There's a notch here and here so that it fits over the runners and it goes in like that. Now, I'm assuming this used to stop at one point. Yeah, it's worn out here. Where uh, the runners, uh, where the runners go, and it would normally have stopped right there. So I'll fix that. And then the the support for the leaf is this little uh, hinge bracket here, <clears throat> also missing a screw, missing a lot of little bits. Anyhow, so uh, the other thing that's kind of finicky, and I don't know if you can see this in camera, but this piece is inlet. These two shoulders are inlet into here. So that's got to kind of line up. I don't know. I'll ask Mara how, how deep I wa she wants me to go into, into building one of these. 
I mean, this is not a showpiece. I know that. It's not a, it's not a valuable antique. It just needs to be um, turned into something nice, I guess. Oh, I found another joint here. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. What is that? Huh. Well, okay then. Same in all of them? No, it's just the top one. That's just a broken piece where it checked along the grain right here. This has got some pretty nice straight grain. So that's it. That's what I have to build and make it work. Believe it or not, with all the wood we have stored here, I actually had to get some, go get some other wood from the Borg. So this is what I'm duplicating, obviously. Now, I found out some interesting joinery here. So this has that rabbited uh, joggle joint on it as well, but they also have dowels pinned through the ends of these for added strength. Don't know why. It doesn't carry much of a load, but that's okay. So I got some poplar, milled it to the right sizes. Now, this is one inch by one inch, and I got some these uh, dot, these poplar glue-ups. The seam will be vertical, so you, it won't be seen. So this will go here, this will be like here, this will be like here, and then the end pieces will be glued on and pegged in place for, uh, just for added strength. <clears throat> and I'll square these up nicely, and then these will be milled for the groove that goes through here and everything around it. That's going to take a little while. Probably going to use actually a dado head to cut the groove all the way around these. Um, we'll see. I, I know I can do the sides and the ends easily, but then I still have to, you know, get the corner because once I do that, I have to, this has to be a rounded corner. Now the lower ones, these two here are five eighths. Uh, all the rest of the dimensions are the same. So they're five eighths. So I've got some five eighths pieces here, which are going to make up these two, these two parts here for the shelf, for the, for the drawer. Now for, I've already cut out and they're sitting over there, the two pieces for here, which are just slightly decorative kind of things and uh, fasten this, uh, hold that side together. Now for the split turning, which is going to be fun to watch, for the split turning, I have some half inch stock here, which I'm going to glue together. These are one inch, by the way, wide. So I'm going to glue this together and then you know, cut them, rip them down to one inch, so be one inch by one inch, and then glue them together with paper between them, and then cut out two, just in case I make a mistake, a big mistake. But that will give me the material I need to do those split turnings, little half shells, split turnings. So that's where I'm at right now. I want to get these frames glued up, and then we'll we'll, we'll figure out how exactly we're going to do the uh, the grooves here and here and here go all the way. See, it's got a radius, so that's going to be interesting. I'm going to have to do that all by hand. Let me do some gluing. Here's the uh, finished, uh, you know, the three divider parts for the, uh, to, for the drawers to ride on and to keep them aligned and everything stacked up like so with the other pieces I'll have to make. And what I just did was I put the dowels in. Now the, the originals, with, they're over here. The originals actually have a dowel as part of the joint. So I thought I'd just add that as a little added strength, although there's no load on these. They're basically just going to sit there and hold a little tiny drawer and that's it. But in the interest of uh, 
consistency, I guess. So what I'll do is I slice these off, do some sanding on these, and then I have to radius them. After I radius them, I have to cut the, uh, the groove that goes all the way around, all three of them. Now, two of them are the same, and this one's different because it's, it's, this is one inch, and these are five eighths. So it's going to be a different. I'm going to do it on the table saw with the, with the, with the um, um, dado head very carefully and once these radiuses are cut so I can go along the table saw, rotate it up, go along the table saw, rotate it, go and so I can get the corners as well. They'll need some cleanup obviously. So this will make more sense when I show you why I'm doing it. Going to require some very careful work and very careful guiding of the work pieces. Hoping it's all going to work out. So uh, I'll get that done, get these done to that point and then I think um, might end the video here because I believe the split turning is going to have to be a separate video all by its own. I have the corners rounded. Well, there are three corners radius. I use one of these you know, marking round in, outside. I have the inside outside set for these to, to mark it. Now this is where it gets really funny. Not funny. So I've got the dado set up to a 7 16 wide cut. It's going to leave a quarter inch on either side. Of this one inch piece. So the other few pieces are 5 8, so I have to change the whole setting just for that. But I'm going to do this one. Uh, and the trick is I'm going to go along so like this, get to the edge, kind of flip it around like this, do this and flip it around like this. And I'm going to get that groove cut in here. Now, this is going to require very careful movements to make sure I get it right. And if I miss a little bit in here, I can come back with a chisel and a file and get it correct. Um, now, the originals. I'm going to assume they had, they had cutters specifically set up in their machinery to cut those. You can't buy a router bit that does that. So I'm doing it this way, and then I'm going to use a scratch stick to do the roundovers. I'll show you that in a minute. So let's do some dadoing thing. This is what I was talking about. So I've got data going around the corners, all the way along each side, and going around the corners. Now, this is where I, it gets some manual labor, manual work. I'm going to be doing the, uh, the uh, rounded, rounding these over, because I don't have a router bit that can do that correctly. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to be using an old, very old tool. The tool is not old but the, the concept of the tool is very old. What I'm using is what used to be called a scratch stick. I think it still is. It's a, uh, a beading cutter. This is uh, Lee Valley. It's got a little cutter in here. You can just, just barely see the radius there and a, and a fence to slide against and a fence that will stop it from going any deeper. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to round over these pieces right here with this beading tool just by going no this one's backwards okay so i've got this to here to here down i've got end grain to have to deal with here and that's going to be have to be done a little differently um Get this piece of crap out of the way. Let me come down and I'll show you uh, uh, what this looks like. So you can see it in camera. This is all rounded over now and that's square. So I have to now go and take care of all the, all the remaining uh, square parts all the way around, turn it into round or half round. And um, that's what I'm going to have to do. And of course, finish the other two, which are uh, 5 eighths instead of 1 inch. Thus ends episode two of 
restoring, updating Mara's sewing table sitting over here on the floor. Uh, I'm going to dedicate episode three almost exclusively or exclusively, depending how it goes, to the split turning. That's fit, fastening two pieces of, of wood together with uh, paper and um, glue, turning it on the lathe, splitting it in half so you have two half turnings. You can do this with quarter as well. If you're doing a cabinet, 18th century cabinet that requires quarter turnings in the corners of the cabinet, you do it this way. You glue up four, make it round, and turn your turnings and then split it apart. Now you've got your little quarter pieces that can go in a cabinet. So that's what we're going to do next time. We're going to all going to learn something. Well, I know how to do it. I've done it before, but but not a, not a lot, just a few times. So uh, we're going to climb that learning curve again together. So until next time, make great things out of wood. <laughs>